Well, this is very strange. Zgab just updated the 7X right before the, well, it finally comes to Australia. Now, how will this affect the global Zika 7X? I believe that the global Zika 7X won't change, but the 7X in China has been updated. The biggest change is batteries, a little bit bigger, and power, a lot, a lot more power. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. Great to have you with us. I almost feel bad reporting on this. I kind of, I don't know, I'm sort of in two minds, but hey, you're going to find this information out, so you might as well find it out here. The new Zika 7X will have an improved range of 802 kilometers in the longest range version. So that's the biggest battery and rear wheel drive. The all-wheel drive version of that same car will have 770 kilometers of range. But both batteries have been updated. The exterior of the car, the interior, not, not really any changes that I can really see. I can't really, looking at the outside, I think it looks basically the same. Um, yeah, I'm struggling to see any differences. But yeah, some actual spec changes. There's three trims. Price starts at $32,300 US dollars for the base version with the lithium ion phosphate battery. The mid spec version is around, actually, no, $35,000, I should say. And the higher spec, the all wheel drive long range with that very large Cadle battery, NMC battery, $38,000 US dollars. In Australia, that model is $72,000 Australian dollars. So not, not much different to the price in China. Really, really not much different, which is surprising. I think it's incredibly good value. The size of the Zika 7X, I mean, I don't know if this has been misreported, but they're saying it's slightly bigger. But then these are the measurements we got from China last year, or at least six months ago and also last year. And then the global version was slightly smaller. So I don't know if there's... It's just the way they're reporting it or not. But anyway, it's 4,825 millimeters long. So the only difference is it's like 50 millimeters longer. The wheelbase is the same as the, the current model. So I don't think there's any actual changes to the exterior. The weight, 2,280 kilos for the base version with the lithium ion phosphate battery. The all wheel drive with the big battery, 2,470 kilos. So it's not exactly a, a lightweight car. In China, you can get it with a LiDAR, and it also now will be getting the NVIDIA Thor U chip to improve its driving assistance features and, of course, provide just higher, faster computing power in general to run the car. That will be a, a good update, and I don't think the global version is getting that Thor U chip. Optional configurations. You can option 19 inch, 20 inch, and 21 inch wheels. And there's a variety of rim styles. Uh, you can get red brake calipers if you want them. Uh, there's a retractable tow hook. That's good news. So there is a tow option, tow hook option in China, which I'm going to guess will probably come to Australia as well. Towing capacity in China hasn't been announced. I'm going to guess it's the same as the current model. I reckon it'd be really good if globally you could option smaller wheels. I mean, personally, I'm I'm kind of changing my order to the all-wheel drive model. That's got 21 inch rims, but I'd much prefer if added smaller 20 inch rims, be cheaper tires and a better ride quality and you get a bit more range. I think that would be a all around benefit. But anyhow, powertrain. Now here's where the changes are. These are the, these are the actual things that are worth taking note of. There is more powerful electric motors. The real drive gets a 370 kilowatt or 496 horsepower electric rear motor. That is one of the most powerful motors in the world. One motor, 370 kilowatt, 500 horsepower. I mean, the existing version has 300 kilowatts. So the power has gone up by 70 kilowatt or 100 horsepower. The all wheel drive, gets an additional 215 kilowatt, 288 horsepower front motor. So the all-wheel drive version has 500 
an 85 kilowatt or 100 kilowatt more than the existing version. That's massive. This is going to be ferociously fast. Yeah, I mean, wow. I'm just thinking to myself, holy smokes, that's 585 kilowatt in a family SUV. Anyway, two battery options. The batteries are the same in the base model. They're still the 75 kilowatt hour lithium ion phosphate Geely golden brick battery, which is very, very good battery. The difference though is in the Cadal Chillin battery. That battery size has increased to 103 kilowatt hours. Usable capacity, my guess would be maybe 95. So basically the battery size has increased by three kilowatt hours in the long range version or the long range and the long range all the drive versions of the car. So three kilowatt hour bigger battery won't make much difference to range maybe something like an extra 20 kilometers of range well maybe actually maybe more like 30 35 kilometers of range would be my estimate based on that change now here's one other big change the 7x some models will get a new 900 volt system new 900 volt architecture so that's a big change going from 800 volt to 900 volt probably to be honest something that i couldn't care less about but it is a noticeable thing. So to summarize, the big the four changes here, the new Thor U chip in the NVIDIA chip, the bigger battery in the, the Chillin battery, the larger battery has gone from 100 to 103 kilowatt hours, and more power, obviously a pretty big change in power for the all-wheel drive version, and also a big change in power for the rear-wheel drive version, 70 kilowatt more, 100 horsepower more for the rear-wheel drive, and then... 100 kilowatt or about 140 horsepower more for the all-wheel drive plus 900 volt architecture and i don't know if that's for all models we don't know yet it's, but for some models my guess would be it's probably just for the bigger battery pack the chillin battery the cable chillin battery so those are all the changes that we have at this point in time or all the details that we have you can't yet get this car in china it's not yet uh, updated uh, Zika is just giving the update. Uh, my guess is that it won't be available for probably, I would say, four to five months in China and the rest of the world, maybe one year. Yeah, that's probably going to be how it'll work. Normally, that's the, the schedule. Does this mean you shouldn't continue with your order of the Zika 7X? If you placed an order, for example, in Australia, by the way, there's 2,000 pre orders in Australia. So, yeah, massive numbers. Does it mean you shouldn't continue with that? order go ahead with it well i don't know about you guys i mean i can't speak for you personally but i don't really want to wait a year and i'll yeah i'll be getting the car regardless i mean these are changes are good and i'd prefer if these changes were made to the global model the international model but it's not going to happen for quite a long time i don't believe and i think the prices are really really good in australia right now i think there's a good chance they'll actually increase the prices because they just seem too low based on what you're getting for your money and based on what they also cost, these cars also cost in China. The, the difference is very, very minimal to account for things like uh, shipping, uh, all the other fees involved with right-hand drive manufacture of a car, you know, having a separate production line, uh, having staff in Australia. There's so many, and other countries as well, there's so many factors involved that I think that if you weigh all that stuff up, the price is just absolutely insane. So yeah, I'll be going ahead with my order. What are your thoughts? Thanks for watching.